Hello traders, Gary Wagner here just about 10 o'clock in Honolulu, 4 o'clock in New York on Friday. Happy Aloha Friday as we say on the islands. 12th day of June 2015 and this is uh, the daily report for gold and silver, our weekend review. An interesting week nonetheless. We currently have a real quiet ending to the week. We've got gold trading in essence unchanged actually right now it is unchanged at 118040 we have seen this market trade as low as 7560 and as high as 8370 so as you can see a very very tight range silver is trading a little bit lower on the day currently trading at 1590 it has had a low of 1578.50 and a high of 16 even or 16 and a half a cent. We'll call it 16 even and currently trading, as I said, 1590 on the day. We did send out a trade alert yesterday and in that trade alert, we talked about putting an OCO, one cancels the other order in. We also talked about that on the show. We'll kind of touch base on that when we cover silver in a little bit. So traders, as we look at some of the other markets, we do have the US dollar is now trading slightly negative. It was slightly positive throughout the day. You can see this daily chart, not that much activity. Let's go ahead and blow this up, but you can see this day right in here, right here. So not really that much activity. You've had a range today, but it does appear as though it's gonna close very, very close to the open on the day. Really, the other thing that we were looking at, of course, was crude oil. Crude oil down about 80 cents on the day at 59.98. Let's take a look at gold. So traders, no doubt, quiet week this week, but the truth is I don't expect it to be quiet next week. Realize we have a Fed meeting scheduled for next week. We've got the scenario going on with the EU and Greece, uh, whether or not they're going to be able to come to some resolution whether they're going to figure out a way for Greece to pay its bill, so to speak. But we've got a lot of activity going on. And that, as you know, in terms of fundamentals, could absolutely sway our current technical indicators because fundamentals always lead technicals. Technicals are simply a, a way of distilling historical information, putting it into perspective and being able to act upon it. We've got gold right now, as I said, in essence, trading on change, currently up about 20 um 20 cents on the day but the key thing that i have been looking at and i really believe that this has been a, a telling sign in terms of where our current price is going is simply by looking at our channel and when we look at our channel we can see a couple of things uh, the first thing is it's obviously in a downward channel when you consider market was at about 12.30 here. We've got this low just above 11.60. We've been in that downward channel, but what we've also noticed is that this market has genuinely be tra been trading from the top of the channel down to the bottom, then moving back up here. It just went a little bit past mid-range, but came back. But you can see right here again, that channel line does give us some real strong data in terms of where it's going to find either support here or resistance here and it's been following right within these tracks now over this last week week and a half we've seen the market come up to the upper ends of the channel line again we're looking at a daily chart so this is today yesterday and wednesday so by wednesday we hit the top of the channel we've been moving down ever since now when we look at this in terms of a straight candlestick pattern right in here, what we see is a, really it's called a bearish harami. It's an inside trading day to a Western trading technician. This is not a very, very strong confirmation. Confirmation on this pattern because it's one of the um, weaker of the key bearish reversal candlestick patterns. You really want to see a solid drop. You want to see a, a candle that has some size obviously it has to be red but it has some size and you also want to see it closing near the lows of the day a red candle simply means that it closed below the open but what you really want to see is it closing near the lows of the day especially on a pattern like this that inside trading day this would be a, an, an example right here of closing near the lows of the day this would be an example of it not closing near the lows of the day simply because you have this long wick at the bottom but that being said it is a bearish pattern we are still within a really 
a downward cascading channel line that has been a downside bias. And we have one other thing we might want to look at, which is the Japanese average charts. So traders, I've done just that. I have basically moved our candlestick chart and converted it into a Japanese average chart. Of course, you saw that bearish Harami before. Now that we're looking at a, a candle that's composed of an open, which is the midpoint of the prior day, you get a little bit of a difference. You're still obviously going to have the same highs and lows. That is not affected by the Japanese average charts. But as you can see, what we've gotten is this well, we went from red, we had a pivotal green, we had some strength, that strength diminished very, very quickly, and now on today's candle, we've gone to red. So that also is pretty much a bearish indicator in terms of the way we look at the market. Pull up our MACD, no doubt we've crossed, we've been in sell territory for a while. We pulled profits, but now it's a matter of uh, re-entering the market, and do we enter it by entering it as it continues to sell or do we look for it to kind of pop back up get a better price and sell and this is really a good indication of that because that tells us that we're still in a sell however what we are seeing on the macds that i believe is noteworthy is the fact that you've got these beginning to move together and that's what you really want to look for at the same time we've had a series of really false positives within this market so we want to be able to look at this, see if this is going to cross back up, but you could easily, traders, easily get this kind of moving like this and then dipping back down, something like that. We could easily see this little uh, hook up, so to speak, as nothing more than a, a blip on the radar. So traders, although we did pull profits on our gold trade, Earlier this week, beginning on Sunday, for those that took it to the market and then stops were hit for those that remained short in the market, we have had our active trade in silver really maintained throughout the week. We remained short in the market. We moved our stop to 1625 at the beginning of the week. Yesterday, I put out what was called a recommendation to really look at this as in terms of what's called an OCO, one cancels the other. And on one cancels the other, all we're saying is that we have a stop in the market. Uh, if the market moves to 1625, that's going to stop us out. It will stop us out with a profit because we're in at 1650. However, if the market continues to trade lower, we want to pick a spot to actually get out where we think we might find support and find a bounce. The point that we looked at where we should find some support, or I should say could find some support, is roughly at the 1550 area. It's based simply upon looking at some recent lows in the market here. Here it touched a little bit below and here. So when we look at trading activity in silver over 2015, we genuinely see a multitude, multitude of data points that allude to the fact that there is, on a technical basis, some real support in this area. So my suggestion is to put that OCO at about 1555. You could put it at 1560, but somewhere in that area. Now, the low today, about 78, so we haven't come close to it, but if we do get follow through selling at the beginning of the week, I personally think that this is a point in which the market could genuinely go to without too much problems whatsoever. So again, we are going to go into the weekend with no active trades in gold. We're going to maintain our short silver. We have an OCO in our silver. Either stop us out at 1625 or let us uh, buy that back, so to speak, at 1555. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We'll talk to you on Monday for another daily update and review. And on Monday, we will have the launch of our new expansion. And that expansion, the trend chartist, is going to be covering a multitude of markets that I really think have substantial opportunities. Now, I don't want you to think in any way that I'm abandoning gold. My grandfather was a gold trader. It's in my blood, and the gold forecast will always be a primary, primary focus to me because... Uh, Gold has always interested me, and it's something that I've actively traded for years upon years upon years. However, I believe that we're probably going to see some sort of real bull move in the market 
but that move might be six months or a year down. We might still have lower to go, which is what I feel right now. And when the opportunities do not present ourselves or present itself to trade in the precious metals markets, I really need to offer you our subscriber, some opportunities to where we can really profit. We are offering a special, and this special will end Monday. It's kind of an early bird special in which you can get the annual, I believe it's like $459. It's tremendously discounted. Uh, sign up on Monday. We want you to sign up. We'll have all of the different, uh, the monthly, the quarterly, as well as the yearly available, but they will not be at this special price so any of you that are thinking of taking advantage of this new expansion i highly advise you to consider going ahead and ordering the pre-order that we're setting up for you and we've given you links throughout the week bye bye